Welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Neeru Tandon, Associate Professor, Department of English, VSSG College, Kanpur. We are dealing with third paper, 19th century English literature. And this module on Mary Shelley, it has been written by Bandana Khatri Burman. In this module, we are going to discuss Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley, life, her works and her contribution in the field of literature. Mary Wollstonecraft Godwin was born on 30th August 1797 in England. Her father supports political philosophies while mother was a feminist and a philosopher. Mother dies less than a month after Mary's birth. Father remarried. Mary and her stepmother, they have fraction relationship. Deeply influenced by father's views, Mary wrote. Now, in 1814, she meets P.B. Shelley, who follows her father's political policies. Together, they embark on a scandalous affair. They parent a premature daughter who doesn't survive. In 1816, they draw to a close with them and finally they got married. After two more miscarriages, finally they had a son known as Percy Florence Shelley. She loved traveling and travels through France and Europe enriched her life. They also feature predominantly in her writings. Tragedy dogged throughout her life. First as a scandal before marriage, then with the death of three children, and finally Shelley's death in 1822. Just as she needed money for herself, for her kids, and her father-in-law, who was a prominent citizen, also turned his back upon her. She was impassioned about her political views, which were rather radical for her times. On finally realizing her true calling and fell to writing with a vengeance, her last few years were peaceful and more settled. Mary began writing to escape penury. Almost all of her books reflect her travels with or without Percy. Much of her romanticism is influenced by the Italian style. Her books and writings embrace not just the romantic genre, but also the Anglo-Italian and the Gothic, to name just a few. Posthumous poems, Rambles in Germany and Italy, Cyclopedia, Frankston, Lodor, Perkin, Warbeck are but some of her famous works. In this module, we are discussing Frankston. Frankston is a novel written by Mary and she was very famous for it. The penning of the book came about as a bet made between her and her friends as they were holidaying by the lake Geneva. Frankiston was not the name of the monster. It was the patronymic of its creator, Victor. The idea behind it came to her in a dream. The dream itself was spawned from something she had read about galvanization and it remains till date her most popular work. Now, it was influenced by the Romantic period, the scientific inquiry of her time and her own life. Mary Shelley's Gothic novel, Frankiston, it presents a clear message on the irony and the danger in the quest of power. This novel presents a different kind of atmosphere and symbols. 
there is a story behind the story. The novel Frankenstein was conceived by Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley in a dream while holidaying at Lake Geneva as I have told you. But the important thing is that in one afternoon Lord Byron proposed that each of them pen a story that dealt with the supernatural element. Mary who already had a dream, she found it really tough to come up with the story. But one evening she decided to write about this issue. One more important thing is there that before that it was explored that the electrifyingly new concept of galvanization which fall, allowed for the passage of electrical currents through the body to get it twitching, they discussed about it. However, when the novel was first published in 1818, Mary was rather reticent about giving her name to the book because it was scientifically rather unorthodox. It was religiously a blasphemous. So she was scared. Even then she wrote and people came to know about this book and praised it, enjoyed it. Mary Shelley as an author, I just quote the comment of Woodbridge. The desire to acquire knowledge and the intense passion for research and study is evident throughout the novel. Frankenstein and is demonstrated through the three narrators. The narrator's quest for new knowledge and knowledge of origins parallel Mary Shelley's lifelong scholarly pursuit and her interest in her own biological origins due to her birth causing her mother's death." Unquote. Now, the birth of Frankenstein is as important as the novel is. When Mary was just nine years old, she hid under a sofa to hear Samuel Taylor Coleridge reciting his poem. And what was the poem? The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. It influenced her so much that she developed her ideas for Frankenstein. Due to the loss of her children, many critics have pointed out that thoughts of birth and death were much on Mary's mind at the time when she wrote Frankenstein. The idea of birth and death started since her childhood because she lost her mother at a very early age. Then she lost her kids and then she lost her beloved husband also. Mary and Percy Shelley were living near the poet Lord Byron and his doctor friend on Lake Geneva in the Swiss Alps. During a period of incessant rain, the four of them were reading ghost stories to each other when Byron proposed that they each try to write one. And while she was listening to Lord Byron and Percy discussing the probability of using electricity to create life artificially, according to a theory called galvanism, an idea began to grow in her mind. Perhaps a corpse would be reanimated. And this is the main theme of the novel Frankenstein. The next day, she started working on Frankenstein and a year later, she had completed her novel. It was published in 1818 when Mary Shelley was just 19 years old. The another title of this novel Frankenstein is The Modern Prometheus. Now you must understand who is Prometheus. In Greek mythology, Prometheus was a titan who created man in the image of the gods. Then he stole the gift of fire from Mount Olympus and gave it to man. For this, he was punished by Jesus and chained to a rock on a mountain every day for 30 years. Jesus eagle used to eat his liver. Now thematically, this novel explores 
द बिब्लिकल कंसेप्ट ऑफ द फॉलन एंजल लुसिफर एंड ऑल्सो द गार्डन ऑफ पैराडाइज इफ यू कैन रिमेंबर मिल्टन्स पैराडाइज लॉस्ट बुक वन वेयर ही हैज डिस्क्राइब द बुक ऑफ पोएम द ग्रेट क्लासिकल एपिक दैट स्टार्ट विद द स्टोरी ऑफ एडम एंड ईव एंड फॉलन एंजल द स्टोरी टेल्स यू अबाउट हाउ दे हैव टेकन द गोल्डन एप्पल एंड दे हैड टू लूज द पैराडाइज इन द सेम वे दिस इज ऑल्सो टेल्स अस दैट लाइक लुसिफर हु एम्ड टू यूजर गॉड्स थ्रोन and was tossed out of heaven into hell for his pain this monster too was doomed to a lonely and miserable life of roaming the earth without a soul to call his own he had just a body all because he aimed to be like his creator and have a woman to call his own and thereafter parents a race of their own now the next biblical allusion that suffuses the story is that of the garden of paradise god warned adam and eve from eating the fruits of the tree of knowledge but curiosity won the day and they were henceforth banned from their paradise frankenstein too could not withhold his curiosity and sought to empty the cup of cup of scientific knowledge and in the event hastened his own doom the thematic concept of the monster itself was fashioned from milton's paradise lost and has shades of shakespeare's caliban from the tempest the story of frankenstein has mesmerized readers ever since it was first published in 1818 it was first published without the name of the author because at merely 20 years of age it was not acceptable for the society to accept such a theme it is intensely gothic as nature and thematically it is set mostly in the cold and often icy climate of italy germany scotland russia and upper europe then there are the unnatural deaths and even murders which set the feeling in the tone of the book at sub zero levels emotionally the reader often founds with installations by the brr factor on reading the book and this coupled with the overall atmosphere of doom and personal angst of the characters it further deepens the feelings of the foreboding and despondency of the story that it carries on now see the story line of the frankenstein at the surface level it seems so simple that a scientist who wants to do something different takes the help of the galvanization wants to infuse life into a dead body and he does so but when life comes this life is not for good he has also certain desires and when those desires are not fulfilled what he does he commits murders murder of creator's brother murder of creator's wife why he wanted a partner a lady for his life he wanted some more things what happened let's see the story one by one at a glance in a series now ex- explorer robert walton he writes a letter to his sister in which he relates the strange narrative told to him by a man he rescued from an ice drift there he is consumed by the desire to discover the secret of life and after several years of research he becomes convinced that he has found it and he will be able to create such a life swiss scientist victor frankenstein succeeded in bringing to life a creature built from pieces of cadavers but horrified at what he had created ran from the lab i quote from the novel finally his creation came to life 
alas, the moment that should have suffused him with boundless joy filled him with repugnance and abhorrence. I had worked hard for two years, but now that I had finished, the beauty of the dream vanished and horror and disgust filled my heart." Unquote. So he did the next best thing that he could do. He escaped back to the world where he had abjured for the past two years. And he began to lead a happy life again, forgetting all about his invention. But suddenly one day he found that his brother William was murdered. Realizing who the wicked murderer might be, once again Frankenstein turned his back on to the people who loved him the most and escaped to the village of Kemenix. There he found that creature killed his younger brother William. Yes, the same creature invented by him. Victor couldn't prove it to the society and he was unable to prevent the hanging of William's nanny Justin for the charge of his murder. I quote from the novel. There he began nursing thoughts of suicide and prayed to the mountain spirits to take me as your companion away from the joys of life. Unquote. And that was when he behold that the monster is back. The creature found Victor and begged him for a companion of his own kind. Quelling every qualm, he did finally create a she-monster for the monster. When all was done and complete and wanting only was the spark of life to awaken her, doubt beset him. The courage to grant her life was no more and he again fled. The monster revisited him again and filled with blind repugnance, Frankenstein willfully destroyed the she-monster. I quote, The distraught monster disappeared into the night, uttering only that it is well, I go, but remember, I shall be with you on your wedding night. Wow! Creating such a horror. The writer, the creator, he is in awe. How can he marry? Somehow, he is scared of his own creation. What to do? Time passed. He forgot, but he was careful. Finally, it was time for some happiness to be introduced in our hero's life when he decided to marry Elizabeth. The day of the wedding dawned. Elizabeth was very happy. The wedding took place. And Frankenstein had taken the utmost care to make sure that nothing was left by him to chance. He had taken all the precautions to keep the monster out. I'll just quote from the novel. However, on their wedding night, within minutes of Elizabeth's retirement to their bedroom, a couple of chilling screams from Elizabeth made him rush helter-shelter to it only to find the body of Elizabeth, my love, my wife, so lately living. We found that in revenge, the creature killed his brother and his wife too. There was another problem. Because of all this, his father also died of grief. Victor chased the creature to the North Pole. Victor finally dies aboard Walton's ship and the creature was to throw himself on the pyre. The monster mourned him the most bitterly because not just had Victor been freed from all earthly troubles and that included the monster as well. With the passing away of Frankston too had passed away forever, the littlest chance that there might have been of the creation of a lady monster. The saga of Frankenstein ended with the monster escaping into the night after pledging to immolate himself. Now, if we critically analyze this novel, we find that Mary Shelley's Frankenstein completely envelops the glaring dichotomy between nature and 
science. Now, there is on one hand, it is nature that is producing human beings. On other hand, with the help of the science, man is producing, trying to be a creator and infusing life in the cadaver. But he has no control over him. The monster being a product of science can only forever earn for societal acceptance. However, as he is not naturally born, that acceptance is eternally denied to him. The underlying message in this novel is very clear. Nature is eternal truth and science cannot take place of the nature, cannot take place of the divine. The monster and Victor are alter egos. Each reflects the discrepancy of the other character. Both have a problem in communication with society. The former desperately wants to communicate but lacks the necessary skills, while the latter, perhaps because of an overwhelming ego, finds it difficult to relate to normal people. Here too, the novel reflects the emerging influence of Freudian psychoanalysis and the Darwinian code of the survival of the fittest. As a story, novel looks a very simple one with supernatural gothic element, imagination, emotions that make it a perfect romantic novel. Romantic novel means product of the romantic age. The tenets of romanticism are there in the novel. But this novel is much more than that written by just a 19 year old girl. It has got a message, message for the world. This nature is nature. Science is important but cannot take place of nature. So value nature. Let me share some important facts related with this novel. And the novelist. Mary Shelley and not as otherwise presumed Percy by Shelley was the author of the novel Frankenstein. The first edition of the book which was published in 1818 did not proclaim the name of the author. Frankenstein was the name of the monster's creator. In fact the monster had no name and when it was asked why the name was not given. Maybe the critics are of the view that that monster remains in every heart. So the name cannot be given. The only thing is how to control that monster. That message is loud and clear. And if not controlled, then how much harm he can put. The novel Frankenstein was born out of a contest between family, friends, which consisted of the Shelley's Byron and John Polidori. All those who took part in this contest ultimately faced tragic deaths. As an author, her writings first and foremost are a reflection of her time. As she began writing, a faithful representation of her time reflects in the realistic themes in her writings. Not far behind is her faith, which is often discerned as the religious and the biblical theme often found in her novels. Her love for travel and her travels themselves appear as travel theme. She makes use of supernatural element as well. Naturally, as she was deeply influenced by her father's political views, even the political themes are also part of her writing. After the heat and dust of life had settled down, Mary finally found peace and began a year-long travel with her son and her friends. She made her final home with her son and his wife. She spent the rest of her life writing original works and tending to the works of her late husband, P.B. Shelley. She became the keeper of the Percy by Shelley's fame and was editor of his posthumous work. She was given to bouts of paralysis and intense headaches as a result of which she could not write anymore. 
Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley, an English novelist, short story writer, feminist, essayist, biographer and travel writer, best known for her gothic novel Frankenstein or the modern Prometheus, died, probably of a brain tumour, at the age of 53 on February 1st, 1851. She died in London and was buried in Bournemouth, England. Her life can be summed up in just one sentence. What she wrote, what she said, what she proclaimed. Beware, for I am fearless and therefore powerful. She wanted to say, as a woman, whatever the problems are in your life, you are supposed to be fearless. And if you are fearless, you will gain power. You will have power to fight with the fate, with the society and the man-made dogmas. So again, every woman should say, I am fearless, so I am powerful. Thank you for visiting EPG Patshala.